Welcome to the first episode in the series, How to Play Adventures and Hijinks. The first thing you need when playing an RPG is a character. It's kind of hard to play without one. To make a character, you're going to need a few things. The rules, which I'm explaining here, a character sheet, which you can find linked in the description, and a character concept, which is up to you. First, we'll go over what the skills and attributes are. You can find more detailed descriptions of them in the Character Creation Master document, which is also linked below. Then, we'll cover what a score and a skill means. Next, we'll discuss trainings and extra skills. And finally, we'll start building a sample character. The attribute Brawn is derived from the skills Athletics and Endurance. Precision is derived from Acrobatics, Stealth, and Mechanics. Knowledge is derived from Arcana, History, and Healing. And finally, the attribute Charisma is derived from Perception, Persuasion, and Street Smarts. Now, what's an average value for a skill? A normal person slash a basic NPC will have a plus 5 in each skill. Particularly skillful people, like Usain Bolt and Albert Einstein, will likely have plus 17s in Athletics and Arcana, respectively. You aren't a normal, normal person. You are a hero. Your lowest skill will probably be a plus 5, unless you take a specific ability, which we'll cover in a later video. You have 22 points to distribute as you want between each skill but no skill can be above a plus 10 unless you take an ability that says otherwise. Your skills will range from plus 3 to plus 22. If you see something outside of that range at level 1, you've done something wrong. This system is designed to enable two styles of play, allowing players to be someone who does the impossible or someone who's an absolute jack of all trades. It's easily possible to, before abilities, have an average roll of 18 for every skill, in a split party, whichever group a character like that goes with will have all their bases covered. As you might guess, the DCs in this game can be very different from D&D. This system allows more granularity in effects. The standard DC table ranges from 5 to 55, and it also simplifies choosing what skill to use. Like mentioned before, the skills govern the attributes. In most popular RPG systems, it's the other way around, with the attributes giving rise to your skills. In this system, your attributes are inferred from the skills related to them. They're calculated as the simple average of their associated skills. Training is applied to two skills of your choice, and it adds a plus three to the chosen skill. You also choose one skill as your expert skill, and it gets a plus five. This one may be any skill, regardless of if you chose it as being trained or not. If you are trained, the two stack, as they are very different sources. This leaves you with a plus 8 to that skill. For normal and trained skills, when you roll a natural 20, you get a critical success. In this system, that has a very specific meaning, which gets around the situations of a DM having to hand wave away why a critical success might fail if they don't like it. Here, a natural 20 is treated as a 30, that is to say, your base roll is multiplied by 1.5. Then, you add your modifier. However, when you roll a natural 20 with your expert skill, that's when things get spectacular. Instead your, of your base roll being multiplied by 1.5, you add your modifier to the roll, and then double the total. If you go back and step through the math, you'll see that the minimum roll for spectacular success is 56, which is incidentally high enough to pass even the highest standard DC. Let's go through a sample character that's relatively simple. In this case, we'll use the Incredible Hulk. We'll be returning to this example in later videos. The Hulk's athletics and endurance should both go from 5 to 10 each, leaving us with 12 skill points left to distribute as we start with 22 points. Acrobatics should be 8, Stealth 5 and Mechanics 5, leaving us with 9 skill points left to distribute. Arcana, History, and Heal should both remain, should all remain 5. Perception should be 8, Persuasion 10, as Intimidation is part of Persuasion, and the Hulk has Intimidation in spades. And Street Smarts should remain at 5, leaving us with no skill points left to distribute. Next, we calculate the Hulk's attributes, as this is done before trainings and extra skills are applied. For Brawn, the average of 10 and 10 is 10. Precision, 8, 5, and 5 is 6. Knowledge, 5, 5, and 5 is 5. And for Charisma, 8, 10, and 5 is 7. Remember, always round down when calculating. 
Now we assign trainings, which should both go on athletics and endurance, raising them to plus 13 each. Finally, we put athletics as Hulk's expert skill, because Hulk is strongest there is. This leaves Hulk's athletics as plus 18. This Hulk feels mm, somewhat off, but that's to be expected. Once we get through the abilities, we'll come back and see how much the Hulk build has improved. Until next time, put those skills to the test.